So are CSS frameworks actually any good? The answer is, as usual, it depends. And now the question is on what? So you've probably already seen that type of discussion online. You have this one guy, his name is like John. And John says, hey man, like CSS frameworks are really bad. Don't use them. Uh, and then there's this other guy called Bob. And Bob says, no, they're actually really good. And then they start arguing. And I think it's kind of like silly because <laughs> it's always the same like dispute, more or less. And I have a very clear opinion about that. Uh, and I just wanted to share that in this video. So one thing up front, the landing page. So the first thing that the user typically sees is most of the time like a static page anyway, right? It's like some website with like some content. Maybe you have like some newsletter sign up or so, but, but that's about it. It actually doesn't contain much logic. And in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to use like a, a low code or like no code tool to actually build these sites. And the reason is it's just easy to maintain. Um, it's easy to change and you can easily do like A-B tests and non-technical people can like modify this page. So for example, if you have like a marketing uh, department, then marketing can basically do these changes on their own. They can change the text, but they can also change the layout. And that in my opinion is like very important. So if you're talking about like a static page, so the landing page, the first thing that the user sees, you wouldn't build like a React, Angular or Vue app anyway. I mean, you wouldn't build an Angular app, like hopefully anyway, but <laughs> uh, let's say you wouldn't build like a React or Vue app. There's just no need to do so. And it all, it's also just way better to have like a static page anyway, uh, because it's just better for search engine optimization. Okay, so when we're talking about static pages, there's no real need like to have um, a CSS framework because you have a low code or no code tool anyway and you just use whatever like they have. So Webflow is for example pretty good for that. That's why like the argument of oh yeah but then every website and landing page looks the same is just not true because your landing page is custom anyway because you're using for example Webflow. Now if you actually move beyond that so if you we're actually talking about like a single page application so i don't know you can log in somewhere and you see like a dashboard then i would say that is the moment where you should ask yourself the question whether you should use a css framework or not and to me the answer is absolutely yes why because it's just about speed like it's a lot about time to market so your problem will not be that the user that comes to your website will say ah you know kind of that design i kind of don't really like it the font is off and like uh, i don't like the colors and it looks like the last page i visited i'm not going to sign up that's just not the case like that will not be the reason like the reason why people will not sign up is that you probably don't provide enough value for them or that your offer is just like not different from like the offer from from like competitors so that is the main issue your problem will not be that people will say oh i don't like this font or i don't like this color your problem will actually be getting traffic to the website um, making sure that people stay on the website and making sure that people sign up you know getting people inside of the funnel so kind of like the sales and marketing aspect will be the most critical thing in my opinion because Building like this website, I mean, yeah, anyone with technical skills can do it. But actually, you know, driving traffic to that website and making sure that people sign up and that you can convert them like to a paying customer, that is like a non-trivial task, right? They have to go through your funnel. And that means you don't want to waste your time like building these super custom like pricing pages or whatever, uh, because chances are uh, customers will just not sign up because they don't see like the, the big value proposition that you think you offer. So for them, your tool is probably not that useful anyway. So it means if you spend a lot of time, you know, pixel pushing and, and changing the uh, color of a button, like you just don't work on the thing that you should actually be working on. Because guys, bear in mind, like software is not just for fun, right? We're solving a business problem, like your tool, is supposed to give the user like superpower. And if you change like the color of a button, 
like nothing changes like you haven't provided like much more value like to the customer so as long as your ui is decent and easy to understand it's like good enough you should rather focus on what does the customer want you should focus on marketing and on sales because that's what every company needs that is the critical aspect you don't want to spend your time on changing like the border radius and that's why i would also never design like a a custom pricing page with tailwind css <laughs> simply nothing wrong with tailwind like it's cool but it just takes too long man i just want to see how do people react like to my offer like is that good is it something they need or maybe i need to change the product maybe i need to add like additional feature or maybe i need to target like different people you know think of it like from a business perspective like from a business perspective you just don't care and that is why CSS frameworks are so strong because they allow you to kind of go to the market like really quickly and, and test your hypotheses because you can only see that something is working if something is actually hitting the market. And that is why if you have your React application, use your CSS framework. Like as long as the application looks like decent, it's good enough and most people will not notice anyway. Now, of course, if you are building like a portfolio website and you want to show that to some like potential employer, yeah, maybe then don't use it. Maybe make it super custom. That's like a different case. But if you're building a business, you care about the business value, right? You care about what superpower can I give to the user or how can the user save time or these kind of things. Like the value proposition is the most important thing and not the border radius of your pricing page it looks fancy it looks cool you might establish yourself as a cool designer but eventually what is important is that your business or your startup or whatever you're building takes off and that is in my opinion why css frameworks are just so useful because you can just recycle what is already out there because most apps just have like uh, the same requirements anyway or similar requirements you need a date picker, you need like forms and that kind of stuff. And you can focus on your actual value proposition. So anyone who kind of says, oh no, you should just build your own thing. It's like, it's not about the tech, man. It's about the business value you provide. It's like your task as a developer to kind of think, what options do I have and what is a reasonable choice? And, and that is actually where you develop like beyond a software engineer, because you kind of realize, okay, it's not about the software. Like, in fact, it was never about the software. It's always about the business and the value proposition of the business. And if the CSS frameworks helps me to get there like quicker, then of course I will use it. Yeah, so that's my take on CSS frameworks. So in short, CSS frameworks are very useful, uh, especially like for the single page applications. If you have like a landing page, just use a no code or low code tool like Webflow. Um, then you don't even have to bother like with these CSS frameworks. And uh, yeah, if you are in the login area, just use the framework because the time to market will be lower. Yeah, so that's it pretty much. Uh, thank you so much for watching. What's your opinion on that? Like, what is your favorite CSS frameworks? Like, have you had these discussions with your coworkers? Uh, like, what was the outcome? Let me know in the comments below. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and smash that like button if you see the values of CSS frameworks. And if you don't see the value of CSS frameworks, also smash the like button because it helps with the algorithm. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.